Hey everyone, it's Jason. Welcome to another Union Arena unboxing. So this is for the starter decks for Bleach, Thousand Year Blood War, and Hunter Hunter. Um, so this will be video part four in the little mini series I've done in case there was more sets later on. Um, part one is I did go through what I thought were the basic rules uh, based on playing the tutorial online to see an idea what the game was because at the time I <laughs> when I bought the cards the starter decks weren't available and then a couple of days later they happened to show up at the store um so I ended up picking up both starter decks uh which is great because they're a lot cheaper to buy in store than order online um so that's pretty cool so we're gonna go ahead and hop in these and then you know part two is we went over bunch of unboxing uh wrappings for bleach and then part three was hunter hunter so now we're gonna dive into two starter decks to see what's in here to one to see if there's any rules that maybe i missed um or key points i missed i'm not gonna go back through and redo an entire re-explanation of the rules because again you can hop online and see what they are but we'll kind of review over the rules quick just in case there was again anything i didn't i missed or didn't catch like i wasn't for sure how many action point cards you for sure have. I'm assuming three because that's what comes in the sets. Um, and then also to show what the differences are. So whether it's worth picking these up or not. Um, just a heads up for anyone that's interested is. Uh, as I went through and I've done the full checklist and everything after I'm doing the unboxings. Is both of these do contain brand new cards. They are not available in the set. So there are starter deck exclusive cards. So yeah, if, if you're like, oh, should I keep watching or is it just going to be a bunch of the stuff? Nope, there are brand new cards in here. So it's definitely worth watching, at least for that reason. Uh, so yeah, let's look at the back here and we'll see kind of what's in here. So you're going to say there's a ready-to-play 50-card deck, three action point cards, uh, and one play sheet. This is 18 types in total plus one AP card type. Um, so there'll be seven commons, six uncommons, Three rares, two super rares, and an action point. And you might be thinking, like, well, but if they're a starter deck, it's a, if every starter deck's the same, why do they have rarities? Uh, they have rarities for two reasons. One is because some of these cards are reprints from the set. So giving them um, rarity means because then they're just taking the cards from that set. They were at the same rarity. And then the ones that are exclusive is because that way if they ever decide to reprint them in any other capacity, uh, they also match the same rarity. Plus, rarity sometimes dictates power. Um, like, a super rare tends to be a more powerful card than a common card. So it also just helps with that as well, just to keep in the same line. Um, uh, I wish there was an extra pack in there. I do really wish when Starter Decks did that. Um, I know, like, Laura kind of does that sometimes, but I like when games just got, they give you a free extra booster pack inside the thing, because it's like, oh, I got my starter that can play, and you're like, oh, here's some extra cards I could maybe try and play around and mess with my deck. Um, so that would have been really cool in here. Um, uh, and Bleach is the exact same thing. Um, seven, six, three, two, one. Nothing, nothing different there. Uh, all right, so we're going to look at the Bleach stuff first. So what I'm going to do is back this up a bit, and we're going to pull my camera out. So we can first look at our mat here. So we have a, a play mat here. So this is really cool. It has the 13 Court Guard Squad, uh, all the different captains on there. Um, so yes, yeah, so we have our front line listed on here. Uh, so maybe I can lay this a little bit flatter and turn my camera down. So we have our front line listed. They have spot for five cards. We have our energy line. On the back, yep, AP area. They only have spot for three cards. So the only what there's going to be be for that life area. They have one through seven. Your removal area. On the other side, we have the deck. How our start phase works, our sideline. Um, so our phases, of course, our start phase, move phase, main phase, attack phase, end phase, and opponent begins. Very simple. Um, and then we have some, I like this. This is a really cool idea to do with some games. Obviously, as the game goes on further and further, they won't be able to do this as much, but they have the different car or abilities. So, Step, Snipe, Double Attack, Double Block, Impact 1, Damage 2, Nullify Impact, Impact Plus 1, and Raid. What's also neat about this is after going through each set, there are some of these keywords or terms that are in the Bleach set that are not in Hunter Hunter and vice versa. Um... As far as I know, like, obviously I don't have every card, so one of the rarer cards might have had one I didn't see, but I don't believe uh, Snipe is in the hunt or is in the Bleak set at all. I don't know if I saw 
double block either. But I know that Snipe is in, um, is in Hunter Hunter. And the same as Step. Step appears a few, few times in Bleak, but he only appears, I think, once in, uh, Hunter Hunter. So it's kind of neat. That's kind of awesome. And if we flip the other side, it's going to explain what we need to play. Uh, three action point cards. Deck constricted of 50 cards of the same source. The same source color, same source material code. Interesting. Um, I'm going to maybe zoom down a bit, see if we can get a little bit better look at what this all means. Because again, yeah, I didn't really have much deck building instruction either. So, required energy, required action point, number card, energy generation. We over all those. Uh, different cards, types, characters, sites, events. Uh, only cards are the same colors, same source color material code, the first three letters of the card number may be included in a deck. Up to four cards, the same card number can be included in a deck. Cards of special, co special color and triggers are limited no more than four cards in each trigger type. Oh, interesting. So there's actually a very key thing, is you can only have the side color and final limited no more four of each in a deck, so you can't have just a bunch of the finals and all that. Only... Only cards with the same source material code, the first three letters of the card number, may be included in a deck. So, um, I'm going to grab a card here and take a better look at that. Alright, so we have, for this card, we have uh, UEOST1. Um, and this is BLC one zero zero three four. So I'm guessing it means the UEO first. Um, let me grab one of my other sets here. Just as a comparison, so this is a starter deck card. So this yellow one here is from the Bleach Booster Pack. So it says UEO BT. So the so booster, probably like BT for booster, ST for starter. Um, then Bleach, L LBC stands for Bleach Set 1 card number. Cool. Uh, then if we grab um, a Hunter Hunter card, it says UEO 2BT. Um so it's set two booster, and then hunter hunter. Um, interesting. So as long as they're the UEO, so that might be a way for them to like, um, for the game to manage as newer sets come out. So like, if we're so if we're playing the game and it's like okay now like you can rotate out standard cards and stuff. Um, so that might be an interesting way for them to do that. That's kind of interesting. That's like, oh, you have to be able to mix and match. It's just the whole entire point of this. Uh, Alright, let's just bang on my camera here. Uh, prepare to play a shuffle your deck. Determine player one. Draw seven cards. You may read your starting hand one time. Uh, place your initial hand on the bottom of your deck. Draw seven new cards. Then shuffle. Uh, that's actually a good way to do it. Some, some games you have to just put it off to the side and do it. Just so you're not... You can't get any of those cards you just had. Uh, take seven cards down. Place them without revealing. Uh, player one takes their card. Cool. Um, up to four character cards can be placed in your front line. Up to four characters in any combination can be placed in your energy line. Oh, okay. So there's also a limit to your front and energy lines. This is something, again, the tutorial did not teach me. Um... As it did not mention anything about a limit number. So, like, again, if you're playing something like, compared to something like Magic the Gathering, uh, or, you know, stuff like One Piece or Dragon Ball Super, there's no number among the cards you can have out. Uh, so this actually makes it a little bit more tricky, because then, yeah, you can't, you can't just keep playing cards to your energy line and be like, oh, I have 40 energy sitting around, I can play stuff. At most, or at minimum, you're going to have four energy, because you could have four cards out each, every cost of least one. At most, you're going to have eight. Uh, so some of them higher power cost means you really have to kind of play. You might have to move a guy up to the front and lose them. Or you might have to raid guys. It's very interesting. 
Uh, you win a game for either all the following conditions. Your opponent has no life cards remaining in their life area, or you have no cards remaining in their deck. I just started their phase. Okay, cool. Uh, I'll just do some really quick run-through on these. Switch, okay, start phase. Switch all your resting cards, character sides, AP cards are active. Make sure all your opponent... You have the appropriate number of AP cards in your turn. So, player one has one card. Player two starts with two cards. On turn two, they each have two cards. And on turn three, they all have three cards. So, there is no... Um, energy, mana, ramping up. Just player two gets to start with an extra card, and after that, you'll always have the same thing. Uh, draw a card. Player one is another first turn. Once per turn, you may play, pay one AP to take an extra draw if you wish. Draw one additional card. Okay, cool. Movement phase. Move any character like from your energy to go to your front line. Um, if moving destinations already holds four cards in the ability, choose one card in that destination from each character to move, and place your chosen card in your removal area first. Sights cannot be moved. Okay, so, ooh, so there's an interesting... Obviously, Sights don't have attack power, so you have to watch doing that. Um, if a movement destination already holds four cards, you may choose one card in that destination from each character to move and place, all, place the chosen cards into your removal area first. So you can get rid of stuff out of your area on purpose. But again... The sideline is like your discard pile, which you can get removal, like, it's like exile. So it's, it's risky to do that, because you never have access to it again. Um, using a card. If you use a card in your hand, you gather required energy and pay for its cost. Required energy is fulfilled by generation on your line. Uh, must match required energy. You can choose to pay, play a character into either your front line or your energy line. Sight cards only play into your energy line. Character cards and sight cards are played onto your field set to resting. Alright, so if you... Uh, energy card generation of front lines are not counted, so it's going to generate up to three energy. If you have three purple energy generation, you can use cards in your hand that are required. Zero, three, but not five. Makes sense. Some characters have raid on them. Raid can be played on them by stacking on top of a specified character. Place well, cards in the field already four cards in line. You must first take a card in the line and place in removal. Okay. Uh, activate main abilities. Makes sense. Um, attack phase. Uh, okay. Attacking character declaration. Select the active character in your front line to attack. Then switch that character to resting. The opposing player is normally the only thing you can target. Uh, attack. The attack character may choose to block with the attack character. If he gets by resting. Okay. So you are attacking the player. And they can choose to block. Um, and if your stuff is different, you do damage to your opponent. All right. Uh, checking for triggers. Um, turn the card face up. See if it has a trigger. Um, card will trigger or place into the sideline. Um, okay, cool. End phase if there are any abilities to activate game phase. Result no. Switch all resting characters and all sites to your field to active. Uh, if you have more than eight cards in your hand, choose eight cards to keep, but to remain in your removal area. Interesting. So you only have up to eight cards and you lose more. Any ability to stay there active on your turn now becoming active. Interesting. So at the end of your turn, um, all resting characters and sites are switched to active. And it also says at the start of your phase, switch all your resting cards, character sites, and AP cards to active. So your AP does not reset. But all your characters do. But since you're only attacking um, or doing stuff to your opponent uh, on your turn, there's no like instances and stuff, that is perfectly fine. All right, cool. So we learned a couple of new rules, but nothing like earth-shattering is going to change the game. Um, all right, so let's jump in and look at these cards. So we're going to start with... Now, there's a bunch of reprints on here. So um, we have Iryu Ishida. Um, and I'm not going to go through and show off every single one, but this is card number 34 for the starter, and here's card number 34 for the set. Same cost, same ability, draw a card, place one of your card in your sign line, same everything else. They just have some new pictures. So this is a kind of one neat thing, is if you pick this up, you're going to get a bunch of cards with alt art on them. And I just shuffled that right into my deck with everything else um there we go now i gotta find the end of it i literally just picked up that uh <laughs> pilot shuffle getting my other cards um 
yeah, this is neat. So we have some new artwork for these cards. So if you pick this up, you're going to get some of the basic characters you can, you can get, but you're going to get new versions of every card. So there's nothing that's a direct actual duplicate. So it's like, hey, if you're a full collector, you want to definitely pick this up. So we do get four copies of that card. We get two copies of uh, Orahime Inu. Uh, when played, return one other character on your field with one or less required energy to your hand if you cannot return this character to your hand. We got two copies of Kiske Yuhara. This character is active. It gains a energy purple energy generation. So like, he doesn't get it when he comes into play because he's uh, exhausted. Uh, I got this really neat one. So... Now, he gets one, ble uh, Ichigo gets one, but why didn't Orihime get one like this with this cool artwork? Uh, Ichigo Kurosaki just, you know, comes in as nothing extra special with them. We have four copies of Yasutori Sago Chag. Uh, active main switch to resting. Once per turn, this character gains energy, purple energy generation until the end of turn. At the end of the main phase, sideline this character. So what you're showing here is this is a purple purple only deck because you need purple energy to activate them. Now you could obviously you could mix green and yellow for the bleak in there together, or if you're playing with Hunter Hunter, they'll add the blue in there or um, any of the other sets. Just the more colors you have, especially with only four energy slots, it's going to be harder to play bigger cards. So if I have two colors. I'm either going to be able to play, you know, generally like a lot of one color because I have three energy cards of one and one of the other color, or I have half and half, which means I'll be able to play mid cards to both. If I'm playing three colors, you grant, you know, you, if you have ways to maybe swap cards out quickly um, and sideline them, do this and that, you might be able to run it, but it'd be a lot trickier. So it's very interesting. Um, we have two copies of Orenji of RI main. If on the front line, once per turn, place the top card of your deck onto your sideline. If you do, choose up to one other character in the field. It gains 500 BP till the end of turn. Cool, so those are our main characters. We get two copies of Tasty Bread. It's, of course, a new picture there. With Orahime on there. Choose one character on your field. It gains 1,000 BP till the end of the turn. Choose up one of your AP cards. Switch it to active. Uh... Two copies of Geshua Tenshiho. Uh, choose one character, 3,000 less BP on your opponent's front line and sideline. If Ichigo is on your field, use 5,000 or less. We also get two Bunkai. Choose up to two of your AP cards and switch them to active. Um, nice. Uh, and then it also has the final ability. And then we are going to get four copies of... Alright, so now these are the new cards, the brand new ones. So they're listed as number 101. So the last card in the other set, if I grab all of these. So if I grab my regular set, our last card was in green, which would have been the green Bankai, which was number 100. Now we start with 101. So these are all brand new cards, exclusive to the starter deck. So we have now we have the cool Orihime here, um, who has double block. It's just like I don't think I was in the set at all. When this character blocked for the first time this turn, switch it to active. Oh, cool! So that way they can block a second time. Uh, active when choose one of the characters in the field, switch to active against 3,000 BP. That's awesome. We have four copies of Kiske Yuhara. Just a solid three-cost card. We have two copies of Ichigo. When attacking this character, gains 1,000 BP till the end of turn. Nice. I also love that they put the little plus down there as like a reminder. Plus this double purple generation. Awesome. All right, we're going to get one copy of this super rare Ichigo. It was a 104. Um, who has Raid, so now you can play him on there. Main once per turn. Place four cards from your sideline into your removal area. If you do, draw one card and give this character impact one. Nice. Uh, that's pretty cool. So it does help to sideline some of your cards. Then we're also going to get a foil version of this card. So we technically get two. 
Uh, it's not listed as an elk art. We just got a foil version as well, which is really cool. Um, then we're going to get the same thing. We're going to get a new Renji here. Uh, when played, choose up to one character on your opponent's front line. It was just 3,000 BP till the end of turn. Nice. So he just to come in and just dominate. He does no, He does cost 5 and 2 action. He only costs 4. Now again, to get a cost of 5, when you only have 4 areas, means you have to have um, 3 cards with at least one gener with one generation and 1 with at least 2. So it's not going to be, it costs two actions. It's not super easy to get out. And then we do get a foil version of him. We have two copies of Arukia Kuchi. When played, you may place three cards from your sideline into your removal area. If you do, draw two cards. Cool. Uh, four copies of Shino Madarame and, let's see, Ryu, Ray, Ryuno Susti Yuki. Um, just zero cost at 2,000 BP, pretty decent. Um, then we have four copies of the new site, Ichigo's Room. Hey, everyone hangs out there. Uh, activate main, switch to resting, sideline this card. Draw two cards, then place one card from your hand into your sideline. Next, nice. you'll look at hand manipulation. And then two copies of Substitute Soul Reaper of Karakura Town. Draw two cards and place one card from your hand into your sideline. This is actually helpful. You have a couple of cards like Ichigo and Renji and Arukia. They really want to deal with putting cards into your sideline. So this is a great way to like safe through your deck to put cards in there to then spend them with those cards. Then we finally, we are going to get three brand new action point cards. All the same one, which is a uh, neat uh, Renji Ichigo one. Um... I think there's another version of this, but this one is, I think, unique to this this exact artwork. I think there's a different one that all, you can also get. Um, and then you'll note, this also does say AP1, but it is starter, because I have the other AP1 from this PAX, which is from the boosters. Um, but that's cool. Like I like that there's some neat little artwork on there. That is pretty sweet. Yes, this is nice. There's some really neat, extra cool cards. Um... You get an idea. They could have easily made like two different decks or three different decks with all the different colors. But I don't think they really needed to. Uh, but I do like the fact that there's brand new cards in here that you would not have gotten otherwise. But all the previous cards have different artwork. And that's like, it's not a, it's a minor thing to do, right? Just throw a different picture of, a different, of the character on there. Then that way at least you feel like, hey, I'm getting 100% new cards instead of Oh, I got three new cards. I mean, I'm thinking like way back to the day of playing the old Dragon Ball Z card games where it was like, oh, random, you got a random character in there, like one of six. So you had to keep buying them to try and get the main characters. So you didn't know which one you were getting, but they had three copies of the main character card. Then they had, I think, like two rare cards in there. Otherwise, the rest of the 60 card deck was the same every time. And it's like, you were buying the same deck over and over and over to try and get these five different cards. And then even there, the two rares that were in there weren't necessarily guaranteed to be different from set to set either. Like, only the main characters were starter deck exclusive. And I was like, oh, that's so frustrating. Um, cool. Let's hop in to the Hunter Hunter. Um, I'm going to back up the camera again really quick. Let's take a look at their play map. So we got Hunter Hunter. Of course, we have our four main boys. Um, all the little rules there. But otherwise, all the rules and stuff on the same are going to be here. They just have Hunter cards instead. Which, again, that's pretty cool that they put those on there. They could have just as easily had, like, just the Bleach or just Hunter Hunter for both of them. And been like, ah, we just made one deck for all of them. Uh, starter. Um, this one came in a thing of plastic for some reason. I don't know why. This one came in this. The other one came in this. So, who knows why they do what they do. Um, and then speaking of interesting things, I did look up, so like, the other new set that's coming out, I think it comes out next month, was Jujutsu Kaisen. So I mentioned this in my other videos, and I said, I wonder what colors it is. It is... 
the yellow that Bleach has. It is the blue that um, Hunter Hunter has. So they each only had those two unshared colors. So you could just do Kaizen's both of them. And then it's purple. So you have three sets of purple you can mix and match. And then you'll have, if you want to play with more blue, you'll have to get you know, Hunter Hunter and Jiu-Jitsu. And if you want yellow, you'd have to do Jiu-Jitsu and Bleach. Um, then future sets that were coming out was interesting is they had um, Demon Hunt or uh, Demon Slayer, One Punch Man, um, Code Geass, and I know Full Metal Alchemist. And I think there is one more I can't think of right now. Um, but yeah, so they have a bunch of new interesting titles eventually come out. Like these are all sanctioned to come out like I think like one every couple of months. It's like I think the next one's in like. One's November, I think one might be, might even be starting in January, it might be like January, February, might be one in December, um, but cool. Alright, so our first one, we got four copies of Kikoro, who says One Plague Draw a Card. So this is a brand new artwork, the original one just showed one of these guys. Here we got their little, like, human forms too. Um, we have four copies of uh, Kurapika. Uh, if you have six more energy generation, this character gains 1,000 BP. So this red eyes. We have four copies of Gun Freaks. Just solid, zero cost. Uh, four copies of Sakazar. So this is the Hunter exam po portion of it. Um, so it's one active switch to resting one per turn. This character gains great energy generation, goes on a turn. At the end of the main phase, sideline this character. Two copies of Atampa. When played, choose up to one character. 1,500 more BP on your opponent's field. It loses 1,000 for the till the end of the turn. Two copies of Necro. This character is active. It gains green energy generation. Just like Tiske. Um... Two copies of Lirio when played at return. One other character on your field with one or more or less energy in your hand. If you cannot return this character to your hand. Then we have some event cards. We have two copies of the Fishing Rod. Uh, choose one character in your opponent's front line with BP equal to or less than the highest BP of characters on your field. And return it to your hand. If going Freaks is on your field, sideline it instead. And then we have... Two copies of the Hunter License. Choose up the two your AP cards and switch them to active. So I do want to point out something else that's very interesting about the Hunter Hunter sect that I didn't quite catch until after I was um, after I was sorting through my cards. So we have the last card here, which is number 99. Um, or the last card in that. In that set, which is 100, which is Water Divination. Um, so then after that, it would be like 101, 101 are the new cards, right? We also had in the booster packs, we had 110, 111, and 112, which is one for each color, which is just a four cost, one point action card for each color that just has a trigger of add one. So I don't, I don't know why, but in the booster pack, they added these extra, almost like starter deck ish cards. Um, at the end. And then the other thing they also added in the booster pack was promos 1, 2, and 3. Uh, one for Go and Kilo and Caprica. Capra? Kurapika. I, I'm going to always say that name wrong. I don't care. Um, yes, it's also interesting as these guys, because I thought, oh, it's card number 1, 2, and 3 of the game. They're promos 1, 2, and 3. So that's very interesting as well. Um, like those guys were included in there. All right, so that's our repeat cards right there. So let's look at the brand new ones. Starting with card 101, we have two copies of Gone Freaks. Uh, if this character has 4,000 or more VP, it gains impact one. When this character attacks from the battle, deal one damage to your opponent. All right, and then 102, we actually have a super rare. We have uh, this cool black and white version, which is neat. Uh, raid with him, impact, one when this character attacks and wins a battle, deal one damage to a player. When attack, all characters in our field gain 1,000 BP till the end of turn. So it's very helpful about boosting everybody up. We got four copies of Captain of the Ship. It's a zero cost card. 
uh, four copies of Nico. When played, choose up to one other character in the field. It gains 1,000 BP till the end of turn. Four copies of Lirio. Three cost character. Just pretty solid. Double, double energy generation. We have a super rare Killua, Zodiac. Um, he's also the five cost with two uh, actions. So he's like the Rangi of this group. When play, choose up to one character on your opponent's side of the field with BP equal to or less than the highest BP of other characters on your field and sideline it. Nice. Uh, and then we got two copies of Hisoka, who costs six home keepers, 5,000 BP. Both that is impact one and damage two. Uh, so yeah, if he attacks and he's blocked, he's still gonna, and he wins, he's still gonna deal damage to you. Um, but if you don't block him, he's gonna deal two damage to you. That is pretty nuts. Um, cool. We have two copies of the brand new site, Whale Island. Uh, if Golden Creek is on this, on your field, this site gains green energy generation. That's neat, like, specific to his, his character. And then we have, um... Two copies of a photo of Dean. The top five cards of your deck reveal up to one character among them added to your hand. Place the remaining cards on the bottom of your deck in your The card revealed was Golden Freaks. Draw a card. Nice. Yeah, so basically you can decide if you want the top card. And if you do, you can draw it. And then if not, nice. Um, so you have two other cards. They Like Bleach, they put these right in the middle. They just have these afterwards. We have the foil versions. Um, the super rare Gone and the Killua. Um, they just put them, like, in Bleach, they just put them right behind the other ones. Here, they put them at the end of the deck. Then the last three cards we have are action point cards, which is a super cool. It's the Hunter ex Hunter License, uh, which is a really neat one to have. And again, they could have just done, like, a generic uh, Union Arena action point cards. They work for every single game. It's really cool that each starter deck has its own. And the fact that you can slowly find them in packs. And since each pack's uh, booster pack had six, and you only need three, it's even if you bought both of these decks, right? And you bought one. Um, like right now, I have a total of three different ones for Hunter Hunter. And now I have two different ones for Bleach. So like, you can mix and match these between games as well with whatever artwork you want, but you can get a lot of different artwork, and you only need three total. So it's like, hey, if I get three or four different ones, I have some options. Um, so that's pretty cool. All right, that is what we have for this Union Arena unboxing. I just wanted to show these off for anyone that was interested in what they were. If they wanted to know, hey, do I, I can buy two booster boxes. Should I bother to pick these up? Absolutely. Because I have brand new cards, plus some new artwork, um, plus some new action point cards. If, if you know, and that's awesome too. Um, plus the play match might be helpful for people to learn. Rules on there are nice in case you don't, you have a new player, you're learning how to play the game or teaching it. So that's all, all in all very cool. Um, I know the next set I said coming out is Jujutsu Kaisen, which I know barely anything about. All I know is there's the Expand Mansions. That's about it. Um, I watch things like Drawfee um, on YouTube, and they sometimes have done references that I or talked about it a little bit. So I know that's about my extent of the knowledge for that. Uh, but I will probably pick that up because I'd like to add some more cool cards and see what new effects can come for this game. Um, out of the other new ones coming out, like I don't know anything about Code, Code Geass. Um, and it also has a subtitle beyond that, so it might be a specific version of that. Um, kind of like Bleach Thousand Year War was like only that series of it so maybe bleach they might go back eventually and do some of the older stuff which would be cool with like the iran cars um I, yeah i don't know much about that i don't really know anything about one punch man either or demon slayer and there's that pig mask wearing guy and the girl with the tube thing in your mouth again don't watch some of these animes but you know hey this series might get me into them um so they all have all the new ones coming out the only other one oh my Hero Academia was the other one I think was coming out. That one I'd be excited for because I've been watching a lot of that. I'm not caught up to the newest stuff, but I think I've watched first four seasons, five seasons maybe. Um, plus Full Metal Alchemist, which I watched a long time ago. I really need to rewatch both of them because I know that, that and Brotherhood are different. 
Um, so those could be excited for coming out. All right, that's what I have for this. If you guys would like to see anything else or like to correct me on myself, especially on maybe how to pronounce uh, the one character's name, hit me up in the comments. I would love to hear from you guys. See you guys later. Bye.